Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and we are working on Chapter 8, Chemical Reactions, and today we are going to talk about predicting double replacement reactions. So for starters, let's remind ourselves that when two ionic compounds react, by exchanging cations we get a double replacement, and these are typically in aqueous solutions, which means they're in water. So here, if we had AB plus CD, notice that A ends up with D and C ends up with B. So an example would be sodium sulfide reacting with cadmium nitrate to produce cadmium, I guess that's two, sulfide and sodium nitrate. And for a double replacement reaction to take place, generally one of these three things is true. One of the products is a precipitate, that means it's not soluble and it falls out of solution. The second condition would be a product is a gas, so it bubbles out of the mixture and leaves the party, so to speak. And finally, one product is a molecular compound, such as water, which would no longer be ionized. And I'm going to put a note in here, if you hear snoring, my dog is snoring under my desk. So just so you know, it's not me. So predicting double replacement. First step is going to be identify the ions for each compound. The second step is to switch the cations by bonding the outside ions together and the insides together. That sounds very math-like, doesn't it? And then third, you're going to figure out after you write your neutral formulas if something is insoluble or molecular. If it's insoluble, you're going to indicate that it's a precipitate with a downward arrow. And then finally, always balance the equation. So, when we do this, how do we know if something is insoluble? We're going to check solubility rules, and you'll always get <clears throat> the solubility table when we're taking a test or doing a worksheet, so no worries, you'll not be expected to memorize it. So example one, the reaction of silver nitrate with sodium chloride. Silver and sodium are our cations, and we're going to swap them using the crisscross method. So here, silver and sodium, as I said, are the cations. We're going to trade them, and so then we're going to have to write the formulas that go with that, and that would be silver chloride and sodium nitrate. So now we've written the formulas, we need to consult our solubility table. So according to the solubility table, um, silver chloride is going to be right here, and chloride salts are in general soluble with the exception of silver, mercury, and lead. So this is where you go ding, 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 silver chloride is not soluble. So we can go back. And also, solubility rule one states that all nitrate salts are soluble, with no exceptions. So now we know that silver chloride is our precipitate. So we're going to check and make sure it's balanced. One, 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 one. So, and sorry, one, one. It is balanced. So now we can go ahead and identify our precipitate. So the reaction of silver nitrate with sodium chloride produces silver chloride, which is a precipitate, and sodium nitrate. Example two, <clears throat> sodium nitrate with potassium bromide. Sodium and potassium are our cations, so we're going to swap them using the crisscross method. So here again, sodium and potassium are the cations, so we're going to do the old switcheroo and that would result in potassium nitrate and sodium bromide. So now that we've written our formulas, we have to consult our solubility table, looking for potassium nitrate and sodium bromide. So potassium nitrate is going to be soluble. All nitrate salts are soluble, no exceptions. And sodium bromide is also going to be soluble because the cation is not silver, mercury, or lead. So that means both products are soluble, no reaction, so we go back and write no reaction. <clears throat> 
Example 3. This is HCl, so it's aqueous, so hydrochloric acid, with NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide. Um, H plus and Na plus are our cations, so we're going to swap and then use our crisscross method to write the correct formulas. So again, HCl and uh, H plus and Na, the cations, will swap. That will result in sodium with chloride ion and H plus with OH minus. So we've got our formulas for our products, and we can notice that HOH is water. And one of our conditions for a double replacement to take place is a molecular compound, and water is molecular because H and O are nonmetal, so nonmetal, nonmetal, that's a molecular compound. So that means that water is the driving force here. We can check to see if it's balanced. There's two hydrogens, one oxygen, a sodium, and a chloride, so it looks balanced. So we can go ahead and write that in. HCl plus NaOH yield NaCl plus H2O. I've indicated my molecular compound with a little L, liquid, and I'm just going to point out that this is a special type of double replacement, and it's called a neutralization because it's the reaction of a strong acid <clears throat> with a strong base to produce a salt and water. So, to summarize, for a double replacement, you're always going to first identify the ions for each compound, second, switch the cations by bonding the outsides together and the insides together, write neutral formulas, check the solubility rules if there's a precipitate or if there is a molecular compound formed, and then balance the equation. I hope this helped. I'll be recording more videos for you. This is Miss Augustine signing off.